She is only the second woman to take the office and the first African Nova Scotian to carry the title. Her honor, May Ann Francis, has served as Lieutenant Governor of Nova Scotia since 2006. The Queen's representative in the Atlantic province, her honor is the Chief Executive Officer of the province of Nova Scotia. Born a preacher's daughter, the government house where she currently resides is a long way from Whitney Pier and her humble beginnings. Tell us about growing up in Nova Scotia. What was that like? I grew up in Sydney, Whitney Pier. Mm -hmm. uh, my father was a minister and my mom was, was a housewife. And we, we were not, we were not um, financially, um, I should say that we weren't, uh, we were poor, mm. but you didn't feel poor mm -hmm. because you had the um, food on the table, you know, you had other richness in terms of um, our church, our community. So you, you never felt that you were poor. It's only when I went to university and realized, hmm, I know what class I belong to now. And she knew what community she belonged to as well. Her honor, May Ann Francis, says it was her family's involvement in church that helped her in those formative years. Growing up with my father being, being a, a, a priest, we were in church three times a day, morning, Sunday school, and evening service. Yeah. And this was all the time for my whole life. So at a very early age, you know, the church was a very um, strong factor in my upbringing. And I remember. And the force, she says, that helped her through many stages woman. in her life. I have faith in myself. I have faith in in, um, in God. I have faith in in my community when I was growing up, and that faith stayed with me because faith is is a sense of. Um, um, hope and always knowing that something is going to turn out maybe not the way you want it to turn out mm -hmm. but you have to have faith that however it um, comes out you will have the tools and the wisdom mm -hmm. to be able to handle whatever the outcome is. Mm -hmm. Said Little did she know one of those outcomes would be lieutenant sense. governor. Earning a bachelor of arts degree, master's degree a certificate in theological studies, education has always been important. And while she started early off in her career as an x-ray technician, department store switchboard operator, and at one point a paralegal, she soon started working in senior roles. And by 1999, Ms. Francis became the CEO of the Nova Scotia Human Rights Commission, while at the same time working as the first female ombudsman in the province. But the Honorable Man Francis says the role she currently holds is a dream come true. My dreams growing up was to always be somebody quite big and, and exciting and to be happy. And it's interesting you asked that question, was this a dream of mine? Just before the turn of the millennium, mm -hmm. I was with some friends. Um, we were having a celebration just before the millennium was coming in. And, he gave us all a, a sheet of paper and we were to write on this paper what our hopes and dreams would be for the next century. And he um, asked us to agree that he would keep the paper, seal them and put them away in a secure place and give it to us 10 years later. When I received mine, I opened it up and I started to laugh. I talked about these lofty ideas, what the world needs is is kindness and love towards humanity and you know then I put in the in the last paragraph and when I become the lieutenant governor I will ensure that I will carry out um, these um, these goals that I, I think are very important so if that's a dream it might have been an unconscious dream but I used to joke around with my friends when I lived in the United States for a while and they said are you coming back to Nova Scotia and I said I'll come back as deputy minister or lieutenant governor and I've done both basically <laughs> been a deputy head and a lieutenant governor but I just throw the thoughts out there and then just keep going on my journey. A journey that has taken her step by step through a life she says could only be orchestrated by God. Her honor admits every experience, every job, and life challenge has brought her to the place she now sits. And there is one scripture that reminds her of God's promise daily. When it was announced I, I would be the next Lieutenant Governor of Nova Scotia, 
um, the secretary who was working for me at the time, because I was the CEO of the Human Rights Commission, mm -hmm. she um, uh, was a woman of um, great faith and scripture and, and knew her Bible. She just stood there and she said, Jeremiah 29, I think it's 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you um, to do good and not to do harm. And so she said that and that became something that stays with me in, in this role. I um, feel very strongly that um, for me personally, um, my faith, my, my background and how I was raised in the church has served me well in this role. And why I say that because it's allowed me to practice the principles of compassion, of empathy, um, to have integrity, to respect other people um, for their beliefs, who they are, and to just be open. It's a role she takes seriously. Being the Crown's representative of Nova Scotia, her office is the source of provincial government power, as well as being a hub for community events. Even granting an official apology and free pardon to Viola Desmond, a black woman wrongly jailed in 1946 for sitting in the white section of a movie theater. An historic move by the Lieutenant Governor, her honor says she can't do any of this without prayer. It's something she insists on doing before the start of every day. I pray for wisdom so that I will be able to um, bring joy into people's lives wherever I might go, whether it's into their fire halls, into their churches, just into their communities, or into uh, an event where there's going to be 700 people to do service to um, my province and to the country. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I pray for. I pray to give me the, um, the strength and the wisdom and the courage um, to do this role and to do honor to the role. A role no other black Nova Scotian has ever had. Even more reason why Lieutenant Governor Mayan Francis' appointment was so historic, considering the racial tension that has tainted the history of Nova Scotia for years. It's been a struggle for, for many people in this province, in particular African Nova Scotians, Mi'kmaq and so forth. And I think it's important that they see somebody in a position of, of power. I mean, I want young women, um, uh, people of different colors, I want everybody just to look and, and be able to point to the possibilities in this role as Lieutenant Governor is extremely important, extremely important because I'm a woman, extremely important because I'm, I'm a black woman. And a woman of influence. She knows that one day her term will come to an end. And when it does, her hope is she will have passed on some lessons to the next generation, encouraging them to pursue their dreams just as she did. I try not to scare them, but I always say to them, you never know who's watching you. Yeah. And they look and say, what do you mean you never know who's watching you? I say, well, for, for me to be Lieutenant Governor of this province, mm -hmm. Somebody, some people have to be observing me. So I said, you have to always be mindful, not to be paranoid, but to be mindful that somebody's observing. And they might be observing for a reason, or they might be just observing. And the world is very small. And in the time she has spent serving her corner of the world, her honor knows she will leave with a sense of accomplishment, ready for whatever God has next. I will take away from this the knowledge and the feeling of knowing that I have served this, this province and this, this country. I walk away with a sense of peace. I walk away with a sense of um, whatever is next is next. Whether that means sitting down, reading books for the next so many years or writing or continuing to help people in a low-level way, um, not up in front, um, then so be it. But I wait for um, my maker to decide what he is going to plan for me. And whatever is next, you know, I will be ready. In Halifax, Nova Scotia, Magdalene John, 
100 Huntley Street. 